Hello, welcome Hello. to the Whovian vlog. We're back, better late yeah. than never. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, it, we tend to. It, it seems like we're going on a kind of cycle of recording on the Sunday and then being really, really late and recording on the Thursday. Yeah. If we uh, miss, I the miss. thing is, if yeah, if we miss the Sunday slot, our fallback is Thursday because we can't do it any earlier in the week because yeah. we're just that can you know, be our automatic we're students. Secondary. Yeah. They make us work. Yeah. How dare they? Yeah. Anyway, um, before the flood, um, mm. I for one, um, I don't know. Uh, I haven't actually asked either of you, but I, I knew sort of the, like the episode revolved around this sort of bootstrap paradox. And I actually, like, I knew a fair bit about that anyway. Yeah. Um, just because I'm a, a nerd. Yeah. So, uh, I, I mean, I, yeah. yeah. So uh, you... I, I don't know how you guys felt. Cause I, I mean, obviously I knew what it was, so I was able to follow it, but I don't know yeah. if, I was, yeah, was going to say, if you like, hadn't heard of it, how, like, how did you, when you when you watch the opening, um, which can I just say I really as a musician, I was like, oh my god, oh my god. Um, did you already know what the end of the episode was going to be because of the beginning? In that sense, um, not in that sense, but because he was talking about it, I went, ah, so it's going to be this kind of yeah sort of story. I mean, where I mean, it's happened in Doctor Who before. Fun fact: as the classic Who correspondent, um. There's a, a very old, there's a William Hartnell episode, which is set during the Trojan War, you know, with the big horse. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He gives them the idea for the big horse, but yeah. he only he only thinks of it because he's read Homer's account of the Trojan War, where he describes the building of the horse. So it's a yeah, it's a bootstrap paradox because he only knows of it because it yeah. happened. So, so, so basically, yeah. the, 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 in this episode, the Doctor only uh, d- uh, does this sort of... Um, the things that he does because he's seen them happen for himself. Yeah, because he's a, because he's received knowledge from the future and has you know inferred um, that that's what happens. Yeah. So when when the doctor said to Clara, "When did I first get those ideas? When did he first get those ideas?" Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think it might have been a little bit confusing. The end. The explanation at the end was a little bit rushed. It was a bit rushed, yes, it was, and I was. Just, I had to sort of. I think it, it could twice. have done. I think honestly, it could have done with. I don't know. The opening was really good, but at the same time, mm. I kind of feel like it could have done with all the all the talking, all the explaining, being in one go. Yeah. So, but. Yeah, that's just. It was a bit. I honestly thought when when he when Clara started asking and he started sort of talking about the bootstrap paradox, I honestly thought he was going to start doing the same thing as he'd done at the beginning. Mm. only um to clara and we would find out that the opening bit had been just shot through her eyes as it were oh okay um, that's interesting yeah um, that's what I, I, think... I thought was about to happen but yeah and it obviously didn't but i uh, thinking on reflection like i i enjoy I, I i sort of enjoyed it um i i i agree with one review i saw which was that the what was the big guy's name? I forgot his name. Um, what the, the sciencey one? No, no, the actual monster. Oh, the villain. Yeah, the Fisher King. Yeah, the Fisher King. Um, I think he could have done with more airtime. Yeah, he was. A he bit was. Bit. He was underplayed a bit. Um, but in terms of, in terms of the sweep, you know, as a casual viewer who would only, I mean, I tend, I don't tend to watch Doctor Who episodes twice before. Um, we do this i tend to watch it once and then i tend to take it on face value and i will watch i'll probably watch it again when the series is over and i'll you know rewatch oh, the yeah, series yeah. And... go back and, but yeah, yeah. when but, you've bought um, the dvd yeah on face value i i quite enjoyed it um i think one i think there was some really good moments i think to be honest some of the best moments had nothing to do with the actual how the doctor was going to get out of it my one of my favorite scenes was the scene involving um uh, is it was which one was it O'Donnell that no O'Donnell wasn't deaf which one was deaf again oh the deaf one Cass Cass when Cass was being followed by um, oh that was fantastic that, oh yeah uh, by by the by the ghost Moran that was so mm. tense dragging for, the axe and then for a bit, kind of, I, yeah and she kind of I couldn't quite work out why she couldn't hear it and then I remember she was deaf and I was thinking oh my god <laughs> that's how is... good an actress she is you you don't you forget she's disabled uh, but um, I was like oh my god this is so scary now yeah, yeah yeah oh absolutely yeah oh that was that was so chilly it was like i i know music does so much for a scene but when you just like get rid of it and it's just when you like... have just no sound it was kind of and as well the fact the kind of scraping it yeah, was kind oh, of it, oh. it had the same effect as you know if you take a scene 
Yeah. And you have all the sounds fade out and there's just a heartbeat. Yeah. That's really oh, tense. Yeah. It was uh, kind of the yeah. same. You take out all mm. the sounds, it's just this scraping sound. Yeah, and for that it moment was just, for that moment oh. you actually were her. Because oh yeah no yeah was, yeah I yeah mean, I was absolutely on edge. I didn't think she was gonna die, but I was still completely on edge. Yeah, and I love oh, no, I uh, love the way they did the whole. She put her head to the floor, and then and then she knew then what was gonna happen, wasn't it? That was what happened. Wasn't hand, it? yeah, she put her hand. No, her hand she felt her the hand. vibrations, and she yeah. just went. Oh shit! And then I mean, oh dear. Yeah. Oh, excuse my absolutely. French. Uh, we'll no, go. it's fine. Well, well we... oh yeah, that's uh, fine. It's it's half past eight. This might go out at nine. Um. This, but we're this not... will go out after the. Technically, we're... this will go out after after nine. But we're not ba- we're yeah. not bound by. Um, yeah, television. no, exactly. Yeah, we can we can exactly. We're not the BBC, so we can thank get God. away with the odd. No, not thank God. Page. I like the BBC. Um, we like the BBC. But we other, just quite other like it. Co- we'd like it more if we, if uh, they got rid of Clara. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Actually, um, yeah. That's, that makes us a good uh, excuse there to sweep in with ah, our okay, weekly yeah, dose you know, of you Clara bashing. The weekly dose of Clara bashing. Yeah. Um, I promise I, this show is not just going to turn into oh my god, Clara's so rubbish. Can but, I go? Because I'm, I'm. Yeah, really you irritated. go first. Yes, absolutely. Right. So, uh, uh, this was this is the this was the f- most irritated I have ever been about a companion in Doctor Who ever because when Clara said to the Doctor, she said, "I am not ready for you to die." Well, who is ever ready for anybody to die? First of all. And then she said, don't die for me, die for the next one. And I was just like, ah, you selfish beep. Just, just selfish, selfish, yeah. just selfish. And also, ah. mm, oh, God, exactly. Not only is it like she's saying, oh, you can die for the next one. Like, it doesn't matter after I've gone. But like, uh, but as well, it's just, it's quite an unpleasant thing to do to ask somebody to continue living for the yeah. purpose of you're and, not ready for them to die yet. That's just, yeah. it's, it's just and kind it's like, of, and it's like, I oh, just it's, felt a bit dirtied just by watching the scene. I felt like my yeah. my, my soul ah. has been tarnished. Yeah, and it was almost like as if somehow one day she will be ready for him to die. Like, what? Like, how is that ever going to happen? What is wrong with you, Clara? What is wrong with you? You need to get a grip, Clara. Right? Um... Okay, we have no option now. The Doctor has to murder her. This is, has to happen. On the plains of Gallifrey, the Doctor has to, in a battle, has to kill Clara. She turns evil. That's the only solution we will now accept. She will turn evil, and he, w- she will be killed by her best friend. No, she won't turn evil. She'll just be really irritating, and the Doctor will go, oh, stop you. And just <laughs> chop her head off, yeah. But that turned very graphic very quickly. Um, just, just this sort of, concludes just... your weekly dose of Clara bashing. Thank you, you sure for your... Jordan has nothing to add? That was nope. Jordan's air hostess. No, we've said there. plenty. That was that was Jordan's allocated number of words. He can only say so much per episode. The next because... train will be arriving at four thirty-four. That was Jordan's train announcer voice. That was very impressive. Thank you. Hmm. Have you ever considered a career in train uh, announcing? Or I, I can't hosting? say that I have. Uh, I don't think anybody really has, have they, until they find and themselves... And next on Radio 4, the Peruvian vlog, which contains strong language from the very start. <laughs> and now the shipping... We had this, the shipping forecast, didn't we? Yeah, yeah, Last we have... Week. Yes. Yeah. Uh, shipping forecast. Dogger, yeah. Fisher. Yes. Yeah, all that. Yeah. Gallifrey. Gallifrey, <laughs> rising. Ga- Ga- <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, this really should be on Radio 4, just after, um, just a minute, shouldn't it, really? No, no, just after points of view, because that's basically what this is. Yeah, this is points of view, isn't it, really? This but is, it's, this it's is our Poovian points of view. Yeah. Points of view. Absolutely. And, uh, Except and we now... don't let people write in, and actually, do you know what? If yes. you, on, honestly, if you feel like it, just comment, just tell us what you thought. Yes, or actually, sense... no, I tell you what, tell you what, no, comment on this video what you thought of episode 5. So that we can read it out on Sunday when we record for episode five. So we can read out your things. Does that yeah. sound reasonable? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, Obviously, we or don't send, want... or well, send us yeah. a letter at PO Box 177 As Brighton. As always. PO Box 177 Brighton? Yeah, Brighton. I thought yeah. we were Coventry. No, we're Brighton now. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. We went to the Labour Party conference. And by the way, other Marvelous. parties are available. However, Other political parties are available. However, the Hoovian blog staunchly supports Mr. Corbyn. Well, I don't know about Jordan. Actually. Me and Milo yeah. do. It's like Two thirds of the, of two thirds of the Hoovian blog. He's a bloody liberal. <laughs> yes. Um, 
Yes, so we we shall be uh, when they you know in the general election five years time there will be a Facebook post on the Labour Party webpage that says the Whovian vlog um, uh, backs, backs, Cor- backs Corbyn for yeah. PM. It'll and be everyone... in, it'll be on the front of all the newspapers. Whovian vlog backs Corbyn. Yeah, yeah. It's great. Hey, we're all yeah, going to be yeah, able yeah. to vote mm. by the time of the next election. Oh, God, no. Yeah, I actually, fun They're... fact, last year a Conservative candidate for my area actually came to my door and said, you know, would you vote for me? And I said, oh, I'm not old enough yet. I've just, I've just missed it. Um, and he said, oh, well, uh, what a shame. Well, next time. And I was just like, yeah, no, no, not at all. <laughs> yeah, the no. thing is, the Conservatives weren't in favour of uh, reducing the voting age. But anyway, and... And that concludes the political section of the Whovian vlog. Jordan, no, Jordan's going to be the section ender. Oh, no, I do apologise. Yeah. The next section arriving at Platform Whovian. <laughs> um, it's uh, going to be, what are we going to talk about next? Um, I just wanted to mention, you talked about your favourite um, part of the episode. Um, mm. I just wanted to say, yeah, um, my favourite bit is the bit where they've just gone back in their own timeline and they're watching the events that I, happened I earlier, did enjoy that. And Bennett tries to go and save him the doctor jumps on him and then but there's a cut yeah. scene and then they cut back and th- that was good but when the doctor starts saying yeah he says something like um i've actually got it written down here he says you can't cheat time you can't just go back and cut tragedy off at the root because you find yourself talking to someone you just saw dead on a slab because then you really do see ghosts and I was like, oh, oh, the that, that is, feels, oh, that oh, is can I just, uh, that's just a really good, it's just a really good piece of writing, but it was yeah. brilliantly delivered as well. And it just went really well. And it was, yeah. And that, I, I feel like that kind of, that bit kind of typifies Capaldi, that kind of like, oh, kind of, yeah. like, Matt, I think Matt Smith would kind of have gone, oh no, don't worry, I can do it. And, and like bent all the laws of time. Whereas yeah. Capaldi is just like, that's the way it is. It's not nice, but it, you know. Mm. Mm-hmm. That's how it mm-hmm. is, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, Jordan, Jordan was going to say something. Yes. Yeah. yeah um, oh, Jordan. My favourite part was actually the opening title. Um, yeah. Just oh, because yeah. of the um, the the rock cover of it, yes. which um, oh, which right. Peter Capaldi actually played. Yes. Yes, he did. I I, re- I was like, did he play? It? And then I went on the internet, and it was like, yeah, he did. And he did, you know, as a, I am, a, I, I, my main genre of music is classical music. So to hear him talking about Beethoven and then to think that he is Beethoven. And also, if you look at photographs of Beethoven, that his hair is remarkably similar to that of Peter Capaldi's. It's all sort of grey and sort of flamboyant. And he I hope you realise he did actually say in the thing, he said, that didn't happen, by the way. I've met Beethoven. Uh, and then yeah, he I know. Back, yeah, and then he look. He has the bust of Beethoven scowling, <laughs> and he's just yeah. Like, but, mm. but first, first rule: the doctor lies. So you never know. Maybe it was Ooh. a story. Maybe it wasn't. It was. I, I I know it wasn't true, but it was just. I was just like ah. And then it was like da 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 da. And I was like yes, this is great. And then and then the theme tune was was like Jordan said was absolutely fantabulous. Um, and also nice for breaking down the fourth wall, as they would say. Oh, absolutely. In the world yes. of dramatic arts. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yes. Um, the uh, the actual sort of plot, the actual sort of... Uh, I, I, uh, it's all a bit fuzzy. Like, the ending of the first two-parter, comparing them, I know they're very different, but... I was in a very clear uh, mindset as to what happened and why it happened. And I understand the paradox, but what I sort of fail to understand is that, so, well, it's sort of, it's a very difficult one. You know, the Doctor, it just sort of seems to spring out of nowhere. The whole ending just seems to happen. It doesn't seem to come from any kind of stimulus. He just seems to be having this argument with this big Fisher King. And then he just seems to go, ah, but you're gonna die, or something, and then he does. Yeah. And then you think, well, is it, was he pretending? Initially, mm, it seems initially that he's pulled it out of nowhere. But the the argument with the fish king is after mm. he's skyped future Clara and seen his future self. Mm. So he's already received that information. I imagine, who knows? Maybe the minute he saw his future self, he came up with the whole plan, or maybe he only came up with it when he, or he only realised that that was what was going to happen when yeah. he was confronting the fish king. Regardless yeah. of when it actually came to into his head, mm. 
uh, he'd already seen that future information, so he'd already he had that plan. Yeah. Um, and it does seem to come out of nowhere, but then you know by the end, by the the yeah. explanation at the end, we realise that actually, if he hadn't phoned Clara, he wouldn't have had any idea what to do. Also, I quite like the um the t- the use of the the TARDIS video phone thing, where he has to like like a like a proper like um like FaceTime or whatever yeah. you use on your mobile. He he has to actually turn the screen when Clara turns her mobile phone. I thought that yeah. was quite, quite good. I, I also I quite like the scene though when he comes out of the tomb. I like that very much. I was like, Well hey I was like, oh great, this is brilliant. So this you know the sonic yep. sunglasses, right? Yeah. The sonic sunglasses he uh, creates creates some kind of makes people makes people think he is the ghost or something was that what 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 was all that about with the sonic sunglasses oh um he was now what was he doing um that's what he did he um uh he created the ghost was a hologram um i don't know if he was using the sonic sunglasses to do it or whether he was using the tardis because we know the tardis can create holograms yeah um but yeah he uh yes so once he gets back to the future he uh uh, creates the hologram um, mm. in order that again it will pass the information back to yeah. his, his, himself. And uh, yeah, yeah, it's a it's a stable time loop. Is uh, uh, so the story the, the bootstrap paradox is called that because it's from a book, um, which is the book itself is called by his own bootstraps, which is about the idea. I think it's a a, a phrase as well, even if it's not a common one, which is the idea of pulling yourself up by your own bootstraps so if you mm. like if you grab onto your own sort of shoelaces and pull it's the idea that you could lift yourself into the air obviously that doesn't work literally mm. but in time travel it's like so imagine if you went back in time and told yourself how to build a time machine mm-hmm. that would then allow you to go back in time so you could only go back in time because you'd been back in time so it's a it's a yeah it's yeah it's, it's quite yeah. conditions that yeah it's a bit weird but actually it's um I don't know. It, it makes a lot more sense than some of the sort of tiny whiny stuff that has happened. Yeah, but I do quite like it's. It, we saw it in Blink, didn't we? Where he. Yeah, it was know. in Blink. Blink. Ah, Blink's a really good example because um, throughout the episode, she's writing down and taking um, the the young man, whatever his name is, is writing down and taking notes of everything that happens. And then at the end, Sally gives it to the doctor, so yeah. that when he gets stuck in the past, he can leave all the messages. So. Mm. Again, where did the where did those words actually originate? Well, yeah. nowhere. So nowhere. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It's nowhere. It's, it's weird. And yet everywhere mm. at the same time. Mm. Yeah. So actually, um, I I think the review that I read said something like, um, what's the writer's name again? Toby. Whithouse. Toby Whithouse. Whithouse. They they said um, Toby Whithouse manages to out Moffat Stephen Moffat by doing this plot, which is what we see in Blink, which is like mm. Moffat's most famous episode, basically other than perhaps the 50th. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, yes. Uh, his two... Well, the, those are the ones that come up as his best love, don't they, those two? Exactly. Well, I uh, would say that, yeah, I would have mm. called those my two favourites of his, but... Yeah. Um, so, uh, I mean, uh, I don't really know if there's much more to say about this one, to be honest. I... I um... Oh, uh, I wanted to mention briefly the uh, the Fisher King. Yeah, go um, on then is voiced by Peter Serafinovich, which right. is why he's got that really, okay. really great voice. Obviously, the, the voicing for that character is fantastic. Yeah. But his scream was actually done by the lead singer of the band Slipknot, which... Uh, oh, right. Yeah, I that's, see. That's the gentleman. I, I was about to say, I, did, I don't expect um, Mr. Richards to be familiar with uh, the work of this did, particular you know I'm musical not? group. Did you know uh, I'm not? I, re- I, you know. I wonder why I thought that. Um, How do you not know I have their entire album collection? <laughs> um, <laughs> well, but um, <laughs> yeah, I, I would say may- maybe I, I didn't know about Jordan, to be honest, but yeah. Um, yeah. Yes, Miss, yeah, the, 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 the gentleman in question. Yes, he did the, he did the scream. So it, literally his part in Doc 2 was to come in, stand in a recording booth and go, ah! And... That's a good. That's a good job. Yeah, he also well, did yeah, it for yeah, the um, twelfth Doctor, twelfth Doctor's hologram ghost. Oh, did he? Yeah. Did what? Uh, sorry. Did what? You know, um, you know the twelfth Doctor's hologram ghost. Yeah. yeah. He does a little sort of scream thing. Hmm. Well, he did. No, no, no. That is. 
a, a recording of the Fisher King. So I'll I'll show yeah. you later. I'll yeah. I'll link yeah. it in the no, description I, I, below. I, I think you did. What you're saying, but actually that was the Doctor made the hologram make that sound so that yeah. all of the others would would flock to to the to the hologram. Yeah. Um, because it's the the sound that they're sort of master. designed to obey. A master, yeah. Um, mm. Yes, but I, I just, that's a really great job, really. Just turn up, scream, go home. Oh, I'm yeah. really disappointed they haven't spoken to Peter Serafinovich, to be honest. Oh, I haven't seen any interviews with him, but then... Oh, I have. Well, hang have on, you? the guy who did the screams. No, 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 the guy... No, he, he's been interviewed quite a bit, but uh, the guy who did the actual voice. Oh, uh, no, um, no. I, was He was in quite a bit, though, wasn't he? Peter Serum, what's he been in? What, I, what, I read what's up... he been in? What acting? Um, yeah, he's quite well oh, known. Gosh, he... Yeah, no, he's quite well known. I, uh, I've i only heard him, to be honest, in uh, the audiobook of Good Omens by Terry Pratchett. Oh, right, yeah. Or the audio that's a very good audio book, by the way. That's a really good, yeah. He, oh. he plays, he plays um, the, the demon, the snake who tempts Adam and Eve. Oh, and my does, uh, Yeah. Whilst we're here, have you read The Long Earth? Uh, we've got a copy of it in the house. My parents read it and didn't think too highly of it, so I was... Ah, uh, right. Because uh, uh, only the, uh, but... um, one of the LSAs in school, who's quite intelligent, um, uh, suggested <laughs> As to opposed me. to the others who are thick. Well, no, no, he's, but he's, he's one of these people who listens to Radio 4 and, like... Oh, uh, yes, yes, of course. Yeah. Yes, yes. yeah. Um, and he said, oh, The Long Earth. He also suggested I, I listen to The Unbelievable Truth on Radio 4 on a Monday, half past six. That is quite good. I haven't listened to it for a little while, but um, let's not descend into another of our John, can you, do our, can you do your conclusion for Radio 4? Do the, do the cut-off. Do the... This concludes whatever we're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, I think we should just take that piece of audio and just, just insert it wherever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just at the end of every section, just, just have that, like, on a little... on a a dictaphone or something just play it back every time George yeah is going yeah yes just, um and now would mr moran and mr richards please shut up <laughs> anyway uh, let's um, let's um yeah let, we've got to do the ratings yeah yeah um who wants to go first um john you can go first because yeah first, yeah okay i have i've barely talked about it um actually which is Quite yeah, strange. You barely talk in, the, in these recordings anyway. I do. I tend to actually look at the um, the episode, what's the word, on uh, the wiki. Yeah. And just look at fun facts on it and things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, well, it's a good, good contribution. Overall, um, as, as, a, as a standalone sort of thing, I think it was very interesting. Um, I'm going to give it about an eight or a nine. Mm. It's it's not it's not the best work, but it it, it needed some fine tuning story, but I did enjoy it. Mm. Um, acting wise, I think I thought it was absolutely wonderful. Fish mm-hmm. King was very well acted. He did deserve more screen time. Mm-hmm. Um, and then story wise, seven, eight, maybe even as low as a six. Ah, oh, I just. It just didn't really click with me. That's fair enough. So what about for the two episodes together, then? Together, um, the first part was better. Um, Look at that. I've already reviewed that. You should go back and watch that episode as well. Well, Um, (laughs) together, you though, yeah. Together. um, Nine, ten-ish, maybe. It's definitely getting there. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, okay. Um, oh yeah, absolutely, Mr. Richard. Absolutely. No, you, you go. Ah, uh, okay. Thank you very much. All uh, right. This is an interesting one. Acting, as usual, was very good. Uh, even Jenna Coleman, she's a very good actress. She just has a horrible character. Um, like uh, a I'm villain. We concluded the Clara bashing. Sorry. Sorry. I just get on with it, ma'am. Okay. Right. Fine. Fine. Uh, nine, four, nine. For the acting. Story is going to be for just this episode alone. Um, I'd say the story was weaker. I'd say that actual pockets of it I preferred from the first episode, but as a whole sweep, I think the first episode worked better. So I'm going to give 
that as seven. And the two episodes together as an overall sort of accumulator, I'm going to give it an eight and say that um, there's very little that I think could have been done to the actual story to improve it in the sense that, yes, it could have been, pr in, been improved, but I can't see how they could have actually improved it in any kind of feasible way. Like, uh, I think I, I think I, I think the I story is where it is. Have kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That the story yeah. was uh, at its peak of where it could be. You know, there yeah. was no. It wasn't know. a one hundred percent ten out of ten a star story. No, but it was the best it could be. Yeah. Yes. That's yeah. yeah. That's what okay. I mean. Yeah. No, exactly. Yeah. That, that, yeah. 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 Mm. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Um. So for <laughs> yeah. this episode itself. Yeah. 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 Mm. Um. For this episode itself. Okay. The acting is just always going to be sort of nine ten because yeah, it was fantastic. And like you say, I mean, Jordan says, yeah, the Fisher King deserved more screen time, but that's not to do with the acting at all. The acting was fantastic. Um, mm. the voice acting, all of it, all of it. They were all marvellous. Um, again, more more shout outs, more praise to the uh, the deaf actress. Jordan, quickly, let, let me know her name because it cast. Her name I, I... is uh, Cass, Sophie Stone. Sophie Stone. Um, she's an absolutely fantastic actress, and again, yeah. props to the BBC for using a deaf actress. She um, will be nominated for a Whovian Blog Award in our a Whovian Blog special. Award. We should do. We an should award do term. that. We should. Yes. Yes. Instead of um, yeah, after the season review, we should do an award ceremony. Yeah. Absolutely. Best story. Yeah. Best writer. Best actor. Yeah. Act. Yeah. 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 Best director. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Best mm. episode of the Whovian Blog. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, we're gonna have to um, re-listen to all of them. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, I'm gonna say that yeah, the story I would give a sort of a seven. I don't think it's yeah. good enough to hit an eight, but like just for this one, I think it. Uh, I really liked the kind of the theory behind it, the whole time thing. But actually, when it comes down to it, it wasn't that great. Oh, there were tense moments, there were brilliant moments, but the whole thing, it wasn't brilliant. Um be perfectly honest but the two of them together an overall mark for the two of them i would give it um a solid nine i think um for the for the two passer under the lake before the flood so yeah um next week um yes join us join us then for that because there's yes. gonna be more doctor who and as long as there's doctor who we're going to have opinions mm. uh, um so there yeah, thank you very much for listening to the Hoovian blog i yeah. have been Milo Moran, and I've got to stop saying that. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I am still being Ben Richards. I, I am also not still yet. being myself. Yeah. I, I haven't stopped. And it's good night Nobody from him, and it's good night from me. <laughs>